What's going on everybody, Benji Kaiser here today talking about the top five laptops for graphic designers in 2018. Now, I've done some videos in the past about the top five budget laptops, top five desktop computers, and even desktop computers versus laptops. So which one is better? And if you wanna check out those videos, they're linked up in the YouTube cards above or the description below. Also, if you've yet to jump on the email list, I highly recommend doing that. We're gonna be coming out with exclusive content for the email list that goes out there before it ever hits the channel. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss out on new announcements, merch coming out, and a course I'll be launching in the coming year. All right, now let's jump into the top five best laptops. And if you're curious about those and the exact ones I'm talking about as we're working through this video, you can check out those links below. Those will take you directly to the laptops I'm talking about. And that does give me a small affiliate commission at no extra cost to you. And I really appreciate that because it keeps this channel up and running and these videos coming out to you. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is usability. So what makes a computer useful to you? Now with the Macs, they have lightning bolt ports on the side. That's all you can use. So you have to bring a dongle and you have to plug in SD cards, USB drives, etc. And that's okay if you don't use that a lot. But for me, I use the ports on the side of my computer a great deal. I'm always plugging in an extra monitor with an HDMI. I'm using thumb drives all the time. I'm putting my SD card in after shooting these YouTube videos. So for me, having ports ready to go on my computer is very important. Second thing is what kind of screen do you need? Do you need a screen that is very color accurate? Now, the Mac does have a very nice screen, but it doesn't have that color accuracy of, say, a 4K Adobe RGB screen like in the Dell XPS 15. These are some things to think about right off the bat. Now, before we jump completely into my laptop recommendations, I want to talk about the specs for the computers because this will help you be able to decide to pick whatever computer you want. The first thing we're going to talk about is the RAM. So why is RAM important for a graphic design computer? Well, all of your programs are run off of the RAM memory. So this means that when you're using your programs like Adobe InDesign, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, it's taking RAM memory to run those programs. So the more RAM memory you have, the more programs you can have up and running, and the computer will run at optimum performance. I recommend 16 gigs of RAM. You can get away with eight, and I've done that in the past with my old MacBook Pro and my i5 processor as I was going through college, and it worked well, but I noticed that I could only keep one, maybe two programs open at a time. Now I have 32 gigs of RAM in my Dell XPS 15 and it's very fast. I can run Adobe Photoshop, Adobe InDesign, Premiere Pro, and be uploading a video to YouTube all at the same time with very little performance decrease. Now my fan did turn on, I did get a little throttling, but I mean that's a lot going on in the computer. And the 32 gigs of RAM handle it very well. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about is the processor. This is something that's been getting a lot of talk lately with the i9 coming out, with some of the heating issues that they're seeing in the MacBook Pro. And so I wanna address that because I think it's important to know how much power you really need as a graphic designer. Like I said earlier, I lived a long time with the i5 during my college days. Now I would recommend the i7 processor. The reason being is the programs are getting a little bit more robust, the computers are getting a little bit more powerful and it's taking more brain to run the components within the computer. So that's why the i7 is a great pick for graphic designers. Can you do the i9? Yeah, you can do the i9, but I don't think it's necessary for graphic designers. And we'll talk a little bit more about video editing and the i9 processor when we look at graphics processing units. All right, next let's talk about the hard drive. So HDD versus SSD, solid state hard drive versus hard disk drive. Which one is good for graphic designers? Well, I would not do anything but a solid state hard drive if you're a graphic designer. There's two reasons, reliability and performance. All right, first let's talk about reliability. Many friends of mine would come to me saying, dude, my hard drive crashed, like my projects are gone, my projects gonna be late, I don't know what to do. And they were truly in a pickle because the teacher's not gonna say, oh, your hard drive crashed, it's okay, no big deal. You can get an A or turn your project in late and it won't penalize you. No, that's not gonna happen and neither is it gonna happen in the real world. And that's why I saw a lot with HDD hard drives, hard disk drives, because they have moving parts. So moving parts end up failing more than the solid state, which has no moving parts. So reliability is huge, and the solid state hard drive will give you that reliability. Next would be performance. Because there's no moving parts, because the technology is newer, more advanced, and continuing to grow, the solid state hard drive is much faster. So your boot up times, your save times, loading times of your programs, all that's gonna be faster when you use a solid state hard drive. How, all right, so how much solid state hard drive should you get? I would recommend around 256 gigs to 512. And if you want to get more, if you wanna have more opportunity to save files, I would get an external drive and Samsung makes really great external drives that you can use and you can get those. I'll attach that in the links below. And I really like those, they're really reliable, really fast and uh, they're a good pick. 
Lastly, let's talk about the graphics processing unit. Is a graphics processing unit important for graphic designers? Well, I would say for graphic design alone, it is not the most important thing. You can get away with a simple graphics processing unit somewhere around a GTX 960 or around there, which comes pretty standard in most graphic design laptops. But you'll notice the computers that I'm recommending will have at least a GTX 1050 or above. The reason being is I want you to be prepared for motion design, for video editing, for basically where the graphic design industry currently is and is continuing to go. And that's creating motion oriented products. It seems like we're continuing to push more and more into the digital world. And in the past, graphics processing units weren't super important because you're doing a lot of print design, you're doing billboards, doing magazines, stuff like that. And so it wasn't very necessary. But now I see the importance of motion design and video editing. So do you need a big GTX 1070, 1080 graphics processing unit for graphic design alone? No, you do not. But I think you need to be prepared for the future, which is where I wanna bring in the thoughts of the i9 processor. So the i9 processor is a peak performance. But the problem is in these small, very thin laptops right now, there's just too much heat. So I think we should wait out on the i9s and watch the developments roll in and then from there jump on them. So right now, the i7 processor with a GTX 1050 or a brown there is a great fit for graphic designers. All right, now let's jump into my top five best laptop recommendations for graphic designers. And again, if you're interested in looking at the exact models I'm talking about, you can check those out in the description below. The first laptop I wanna talk about is the Dell XPS 15. This is my daily laptop that I use every single day. It's very fast, works great for graphic design, for video editing, for motion design, and it has a 4K Adobe RGB screen, so it has amazing color accuracy. That's a question I get a lot is, is this screen color accurate? Well, the 4K screen on the Dell XPS 15 is fantastic. All right, so why is this computer so powerful? Why is it so useful? Well, it has the ports on the side that I need, it has 32 gigs of RAM and is a GTX 1050 graphics processing unit. It has the i7 processor and it has 512 gigs of solid state hard drive. So it's a very well equipped computer. Another big reason why I really like this computer is it has an all aluminum chassis with a carbon fiber key deck. So if you're somebody who's struggling between the MacBook Pro versus Windows debate, this is the perfect computer for you. I'm a diehard Mac fan for many years and I recently made the switch just because I want more performance and more video capabilities and this Dell XPS 15 has that. All right, so we're working through some of these details in these computers. If you have any questions, you can grab a link to the question submission form in the description below. Drop me a question and I'll be sure to answer that question on the channel. All right, the next computer, speaking of the MacBook Pro, is the MacBook Pro 2018. This computer is well equipped. I mean, for me, I struggled mentioning the MacBook Pro in my videos for the past year or so because they just hadn't made sufficient upgrades to make me confident enough to recommend this computer, but now they have done so. It now comes with the i7 processor. It comes with the Radeon 560X graphics processing unit. It comes with a range of 256 to four terabytes of solid state hard drive, but I recommend getting the 256 to 512 because you don't need that much in your computer and it'll cost you like $7,000 to get that computer. So just don't do that. The screen is a very high quality screen, but it's not gonna be the Adobe RGB color accuracy of the 4K screen, just keep that in mind. And remember, you can only have lightning bolt ports on the side. So you'll have to get a dongle to bring in USB drives, HDMI ports, SD cards, all of that. This also comes with a range of 16 gigs of RAM to 32 gigs of RAM, so really good upgrade. But remember, you cannot upgrade this computer on your own. So once you get the 512 gig solid state hard drive and the 16 gigs of RAM or the 32 gigs of RAM, that's it. So that's the great thing about the Windows products is you can upgrade them. You can no longer do that with the Macs. Uh, all the components are soldered to the motherboard. So keep that in mind, very important to me as a graphic designer. All right, so the next computer I wanna talk about is the MSI GS65 Stealth Thin. This computer is a great computer if you're looking for an alternative to Dell XPS 15 or the MacBook Pro because it is a more affordable version. The reason being is it doesn't have the all aluminum chassis, but it is still great build quality. This comes with 32 gigs of RAM, the GTX 1070 graphics processing unit, so really good for motion design and video editing, as well as 512 gigs of solid state hard drive and the i7 processor. So you're not gonna go wrong with this computer. It's got great port options on the sides, but it is not a 4K screen. So that's one reason you're saving some money because you don't have that Adobe RGB color accuracy of the 4K screen. It's just HD, but still a fantastic pick. 
And continue to move forward, computer number four is the Razer Blade 15. Now this computer is great because it comes in the option of a 4K or an HD screen. So right off the bat, you can work with that color accuracy or go for more of an affordable model. This computer is well equipped. It has 16 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of solid state hard drive, the GTX 1060 Max-Q GPU, and it has an i7 processor. So a great computer for graphic design, well equipped for your needs uh, at a bit of a more affordable rate. And the last computer I wanna talk about, this computer has been getting some really good rave from a lot of people for the comparison of the MacBook Pro and the Dell XPS 15, and that's the Gigabyte Aero 15. Build quality is phenomenal, screen is good, it's not 4K again, it's HD. But like I said, I'm giving you some more affordable options. Uh, if you're really concerned about budget computers, you can check that video out in the links above, or the description below and, and check out those budget computers that I recommend. All right, so the Gigabyte Aero 15, this computer comes with 16 gigs of RAM, the GTX 1070 graphics processing unit, 512 gigs of solid state hard drive, and the i7 processor. The computer is also rated for 10 hours of battery life, which is one of the best battery lives in this lineup of computers. So that's something if you're really concerned about, I would definitely check that out. All right, so there you have it, the top five best laptops for graphic designers. Again, if you've yet to subscribe to the channel, I highly recommend doing so. Put out videos helping you in the graphic design industry. And you don't wanna miss out on that email list, coming out with exclusive content for the email list before it ever hits the channel. So you can grab a link for that below. All right, well, I'm Benji Kaiser of BenjiKaiser.com, and I will see you here on the next episode.